peace. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Jay every day. And my topic today is going to be the salute to woman hustle. For a number of years now, um, there have been a group of men that have catered strictly to women. You'll know these men as I name them. Um, your Tyler Perry's, your Steve Harvey's, your Drake's. Um, these men have created a cottage industry where men create, sell, and distribute content for the sole purpose of securing women's buying power. Um, let me just go down the list. Let's start with Mr. Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey has a radio show called Steve Harvey Morning Show and the optics on his show is okay I have my nephew and a friend on this side that are males and I have two women on the other side and they run the gamut of the show this is every morning um, he does this thing called the strawberry letter and whenever they tell the story, whenever they do these things called the strawberry letter, basically someone sends them a letter and asks them advice on what they should do with regards to their relationship. Whenever they do this, um, it seems like the perspective is always from a woman's standpoint and about how her man isn't no good, her man is cheating, her man is this. It's always from the standpoint of what a man does or doesn't do. Um, then all five of the people on the radio show, the five whole, I mean, the whole Steve Harvey and his four co-hosts, proceed to crack jokes about the situation and then bash the man then one of the women and Steve offer solution to the woman. Okay, so that's one of his hustles. His other hustle, uh, Steve Harvey's other hustle with using religion, his other hustle is the book game. Steve Harvey made a book called think like a man and act like a woman where he basically comes up with these convoluted rules and warning signs every woman should be aware of when dealing with a man after he made a book then he proceeded to make a movie and the movie was a success and the book was a success Um, let me start off by saying we live in a free country everybody is free to do whatever they want with regards to what they write and whatever kind of content they choose to create but when Steve Harvey makes a book like Think Like a Man or Act Like a Woman what he's really trying to do is tell women if a man doesn't do these 25 things that should be a warning sign for you. Now, um, with his book content, um, he's made a conscious choice to cater to women. That's his prerogative. I have no, no issue with it, but let's get it straight. He's not going to make a, a book for men, a manual for men when, when dealing with women. You'll, you'll never see that book from Steve Harvey. 
His next hustle is his TV show. Now, his with his TV show, he does the same thing. He caters specifically to women. And then he has a panel of women on afterwards to discuss a certain issue. You heard me correctly. He doesn't have a panel of men. He has a panel of women. Um, the funny thing about this panel of women he has, and this is his next hustle that's coming, but people, he has two singers, two R&B singers, and he has a third woman with some type of letters or degrees behind her name, but they're offering their take on what, whatever the situation is. Um, this hustle of his has made Steve Harvey a rich man. But like I said, it's a hustle and it caters to women. And part of it is he's perfected the craft of let me empower women and let me bash men, but let me do it in a joking way or let me do it in a way that consistently points out the flaws and what's wrong with men while uplifting women at the same time. So that's Steve Harvey. Next, let me get to Mr. Albie Graham, the rapper also known as Drake. Drake is the type of rapper that um, he's a rapper, he's not an MC. An MC, the difference between a rapper and an MC is a rapper caters to the radio and the public. The MC the MC makes music for the craft. The MC isn't necessarily trying to get radio or mainstream love. And you can tell the difference between the two because when an MC raps, it's going to sound different than everything that's on the radio. So Drake portrays this image as, oh, I can't find love. I'm such a lost little puppy. Um, I'm always looking for Mrs. Wright and all of this and he makes these empowerment songs for women like I said with Steve Harvey if that's Drake's prerogative so be it let's see what Drake fails to do or he doesn't do sometimes is while he portrays that type of music Drake has a habit of of being Mr. Second Place, meaning when when someone is dealing with someone famous, Drake will always be the cleanup man and come behind them and start dating them. He did it with Chris Brown and Rihanna and his ex girlfriend Karuchi Tran. He did it with Common and Serena Williams. And let's not, we're not going to even mention the various strippers and other women that people have dated and Drake has gone behind them and dated. Um, who you choose to, you know, decide to have sex with or who you choose to have a relationship, that's your own personal business. Um, who you choose to hustle your wares to, that's your own personal business too. Like I said, my point, the point of this, um, the point of this whole discussion is just to point out this hustle 
and show that these individuals never do anything that celebrates or recognizes the achievement of men. Last but not least, Mr. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is a black filmmaker who um, he's heavy in the religion and he tends to make these movies where men are seen as weak, ineffectual, soft, lacking direction and focus and all the women in his movie are seen as strong, dependable, the rock, the anchors of their families. And that's the framework that he creates the story around that. Um, Tyler Perry first got into that shit by doing it with plays. His plays became so famous and so well known, he decided to move on to the movies and you can tell by his movies you know why did I get married um, diary of a mad black women the Medeas um, there's there's so many movies oh, what's the other one for colored girls there's so many movies and so much of this shit that he hustles and pedals it's too much for me to name off the top of my head. That's how many. That's how many of these. Um, so much of this trope, I should say, that he puts out. Um, he's best friends with Oprah Winfrey, so of course he always goes on Oprah shows. Um, he has, I think, he has two TV shows on their network, and the TV shows follows the, the same formula that his movies do. do. Um, and that's his hustle. He caters to and sells to women. Um, let me start off by saying this. Um, The reason why I say it's a hustle is because, in my own opinion, just mine, um, a great story is a great story. You don't have to um, cater to one person in order to tell a great story. For example, um, there was this movie called Molly's Game and it told the story of how this woman went from being a you know basically she started organizing her own high stakes poker games ran afoul of the law and her story told of how it came to pass the reason why that was such a good story is because you could have put a man in there and the story would have been just as interesting. Yeah, there were some things that were specific to her gender having to do with the movie, but at the same time, I can recognize a great story is a great story. So this isn't about me bashing women or saying, oh, women aren't shit and oh, this and this and all of that stuff. This is primarily about the gentleman I just spoke about who continually create content that caters to a, to a group of people. They do it continuously over and over again, but it's You, you still put the same piece of shit in new wrapping paper. You can tell a great story involving a, involving women, but you don't have to um, keep making bullshit stories. 
And the reason why I say this is because I've seen and heard of great stories about women where the artist just wasn't continuously hitting you over the head with stories about women and how they're stronger than men and all of this continuously over and over again. Because on that same point, I can say Tyler Perry, with all the resources and everything he got, why didn't he make, um, what's the movie, the Hidden, the Hidden Numbers movie about the women math mathematicians that worked at NASA? You see what I'm saying? There are great stories out here to be told involving women but they don't have to be done at the expense of bashing men because that hidden that hidden figures movie I don't think really bashed men it told of a time and a place in America but how these women were so exceptional at their specific craft at their chosen profession intellectually that it was a, a unique narrative with regards to American history. So when you see certain people who continue to make product and content, but you're always in that same lane, in that same path, the real story is are you really a creative or are you just a hustler This story has been going on over and over again, and these gentlemen are just the latest in a long line of people to do it. What makes them different is they're just catering to black women with it. Um, I don't feel either way about it. It's just an opinion I have. I've noticed it. And I just wanted to put it out there in the ether and, you know, start the discussion. And for anybody who think, who disagrees with me, please comment, please, you know, open up the dialogue. Tell me I'm wrong. That's it. That's all I got to say. Peace. I'm out.